Hello, cheapskaters. I'm Kath Armstrong, creator of the Cheapskates Club, where our goal is to live life debt free, cashed up, and laughing. If this is your first visit to our channel, welcome. And if it's not, welcome back. I'm going to wait a few minutes, guys, um, before I get started, because I have so much to get through tonight. I've been planning this show for a week, actually for a bit longer than a week, about 10 days. I wasn't sure when we were going to do it. I wasn't sure whether it was going to be a live or a recorded show. Ah, it's alive. And then all of a sudden, it just seems so timely. So I want to give everyone a chance to finish dinner, getting kids to bed, putting the dog outside, making their cup or whatever. And... Um, then I'll get started. So we'll just give them a couple of minutes to catch up. And in the meantime, I can say hello to a few of you because look, we've got, oh goodness, Truth is One was first on chat tonight. Welcome. <laughs> Guys, if you want to join the live chat, you are more than welcome. You just need to log into your YouTube channel or your Gmail account. It's a YouTube thing, not a me thing. Um, and you can join the live chat. If you don't have those, don't panic. There's a there's discussion boxes below me, and you've you've got questions. Put them in there. And on that note, if you have questions, if you can put them in all capitals, if you're in the chat, so that it stands out, just makes it easier for me to find them. Wow, Yvonne, hello, hello, and Lois, hello, Catherine. Hello, Beverly. Hello, Estelle. We haven't seen you for a few weeks. I hope you've been doing something exciting. Um, hello, Michelle. Hello, Pam, Evelyn, Sylvia, Utah. Got it? Oh, it's, I'm trying. Selena, Margaret. Um, okay. Tegan. Julia, oh, there we go, it jumped on me. Mrs. Dilligaf, Bob Star, Catnaps. I could have used one of those this afternoon. Um, Outback Six. Okay. Guys, did you see the news tonight? It was, it was very distressing. I was lying, actually, yesterday morning it was very distressing. I was lying in bed. Um, hello, Auslander. Hello, Delaney. Um, lying in bed yesterday morning, listening to the early news before I got up and they do a petrol price thingamajiggity thing oh my goodness $2.50 petrol has hit here in Melbourne $2.50 a litre for unleaded petrol now they only had two service stations charging that but that is atrocious Make me, guys, make me Prime Minister. It would not happen. It doesn't need to be that price. It is just, <laughs> it, it is just, um, sorry, I'm just laughing at a comment, outrageous. It really is not necessary. It should not be that price in Australia. And I don't care what our government says. They're all morons. They're all monkeys. They're all fools that are selling us down the drain and leading us to bankruptcy that's all right that's off my political high horse now but honestly um Auslander yes the dinosaur dinosaurs rule sorry dinosaurs rule guys um Selena I hope you and your husband feel better really soon we have quite a few people on the sick list at the moment I don't know whether it's the time of year or it fits because for the last two and a half years we've sort of only had one illness to worry about and now all the others are coming out. I don't know, but there's quite a few um, not feeling well. Uh, here we go, Aradia. We've been thinking of people in New South Wales affected by the floods. Let me just get some water. I feel like I've swallowed a cotton ball. Um, 
we have family um, in those areas and it is, it's scary and it's heartbreaking. I don't know what else to say, but we are thinking of everybody. Um, thank you, Tegan. <laughs> um, Catherine, I was talking to um, talking to a stranger, a virtual stranger, this afternoon, that rang up to ask a question, and I answered the question, and then they made a comment, and I said, "You know what? Sometimes God is really good to me, and He just takes the words that I want to say away and puts the right words in my mouth, because." Sometimes the words I want to say aren't the ones that come out. <laughs> so God is good to me. He looks after me. Um, oh, Selena, take it easy. Take it really easy. The recovery can be worse than the actual illness, I'm told. Joy will know because she's um, recovering too. All right. Truth is one. I took your advice and got some dark grape juice. It is quite nice. Dark grape juice is really nice. So just remember, you can't go overboard. I mean, you could go overboard on it because it's really nice, but you don't need all that juice. But a little glass in the morning, a little glass at night, full of iron and really good things for you. will build your blood up. Um, anyone that's anemic, dark grape juice is an excellent natural source of iron iron um vicky we're thinking of you she's in penrith near the nepean river okay well everyone stay safe god is good all right let's get started i've really got um oh yes we've gone seven minutes so that's plenty of time i've got um my cup of tea in my Best Christmas present ever mug. Keeps it hot for me. So I'm going to start now. Um, I have lots of notes. I have lots and lots of notes tonight. So please bear with me as I refer to them. If I look like I'm getting lost, I'm not. I'm just trying to make sure I'm getting what I have to say across because I really don't want to forget a thing. I think this this topic is, is far too important and actually timely in light of the third interest rate rise in as many months. And already, you know, mortgage stress is already starting to affect Australian families. And I know because this week alone I've had two emails from cheapskaters about it. Um, so if you need to come back and re-watch this, do it. If you've got questions, put them in capitals. I'll do my best to answer them. I'm just going to dive in and go through my notes <laughs> so that we get through it. And hopefully, hopefully it'll help someone and hopefully it will encourage more people and give you all the confidence to know that inflation is happening, but we can beat it. Now, um, back on the 10th of March, um, we were told to expect more grocery shortages, to expect more price rises across everything, and for fuel to continue to rise steeply, now that's unleaded, to continually to rise steeply to over $4 a litre for the next three years. Three years, 36 months, 156 weeks. That's a long time. So since then, we've been told that you know, diesel is going to reach $5, $5 a litre by the end of this year. I hope not. I sincerely hope not. But it is possible. Anything is possible. You know, we've got unleaded selling for $2.50 at some service stations here in Melbourne. 
That's just a stupid price. But for um, the powers that be to already say that these rises are going to continue for at least the next three years means they're planned for three years. They're actually planned for three years and longer. So if you are not building your pantries, if you're not preparing your pantries and you're not preparing your budget and your lifestyle, then it's time to start. And you need to start now and prepare as fast as you can. Now, I'm not telling you to run out and panic buy. We don't do that. And there is no point in doing that. Preparing for this needs to be done with a plan and it needs to be done with cash. You don't go into debt to prepare because now is not the time to be going into debt or to be adding to existing debt. All right, so first things first, surviving right now in July 2022. Now, Caroline emailed me on Monday. She asked for tips on how to cope with rising prices right now. My first tip is don't stop filling your pantry. Don't stop shopping for food. Don't stop shopping for toiletries. Buying today is going to be cheaper than buying next week when the price goes up again. So keep your pantry stocked. My next tip is buy ingredients. Now, I can't, I can't stress this enough. And I know that you might get sick of me saying it, but ingredients give you options. But ingredients are also cheaper. They are seriously cheaper than buying the packaged ready-made versions of things. Now, if you don't know what to do with ingredients, go to our website, go to the recipe file, pick a recipe and make it. Then pick another one and make it. Try them. Pick ones that might appeal to you and try them. Or go back through the cooking videos and make one of those recipes. Now, I don't know how many cooking videos I've got on the channel. I know we've got 455 videos now. A lot of them are cooking videos. Try it. Just try using the ingredients that you have to make something. Now, I know you can um, type the ingredients you have into some of the bigger cooking recipe um, websites and it will bring up a list of recipes that you can make with those ingredients. Do that if you have to. But just try it because ingredients, they give you options, but they are so much cheaper. Now, my third tip is only buy what you eat and use. Only buy what you eat and what you use. Now, I've been saying it, I've been saying it for way over 20 years. Um, I first said it on um, Channel 9 <laughs> and I sent the whole crew into hysterics. But you know those tins of smoked oysters in tomato sauce? Well, they may well have been a bargain at 10 cents a tin. So, you know, buying 12 boxes might have been a bargain, but it's not if you only use one tin a year on New Year's Eve. It's an absolute waste of money. It's a waste of valuable real estate in your pantry. Now, switch out smoked oysters and then the 10 cents for whatever you think might have been a bargain when you bought it, even though you don't really like it, you don't use it that often, you don't know what to do with it, and the example will, will fit your circumstance <laughs> because there are people who panic and they race out and they buy anything they can get so the pantry is full. A full pantry makes them feel good. Is their security blanket? Well, guess what? It's mine too. But if it's full of things they don't use, then it is a useless pantry and a complete and utter waste of money, not to say time and fuel and energy. So do these three things and make them a habit. 
my next tip is make lists. Now, I know you probably want to go all gung-ho and just start making, you know, rebuilding, restocking, growing that pantry, paying down that debt, whatever, but make lists. You should be doing those things. You should be paying down your debt. You should be um, building your savings. You should be building your pantry. But before you do all those things, you need to know what to buy. You need to know how much to buy. You need to have a safe, secure place to store it. Because, you know, even the basics for a family of four, if you were going to stock up for three years, that's a lot of food and toiletries and cleaning products and clothing and garden needs. If you've got debt, you need to know how much, how much the repayments are, how long it's going to take you to repay it. You need those lists. You need lists because if you're going to prepare, you need to prepare across all areas of your life and you need to have a balanced plan. So make lists. I do. You can be working on those lists as you make them. My lists are constantly changing. I add to them. I cross things off. I shift things from one list to another list. They don't just, you know, stay pretty in, in my planner. I use them. Lists are a really good tool, but only if you use them. Now, I know there's, there's some personalities who love to make lists and they use coloured highlighters and they rule up columns and they put little stickery things next to things and they works of art but they don't use them they just make them so make your lists and if you want to use colored highlighters and put little stickers on them and make them pretty do that but make sure you use those lists as the tools they are my next tip is about shopping right now because right now, July 2022, with rising prices and empty shelves, shopping, in theory, shouldn't be any different to shopping what it was July 2019. The rules are still the same. We shop with a list. We look for markdowns. We look for half price, half price items and we buy at least two if you've got two on your list, you buy four because you're still only paying for the two you had on your list, but now you've added two to your pantry stockpile. We've, um, the last two and a half years, we've all had to make some changes to the way we shop though. Um, little tweaks to our shopping habits. they make a bit of a difference one is we need to be more prepared to shop around shortages we need to be able to go from if we know it's not at shop a then maybe we can try shop b or shop c that's hard to say guys we need to be prepared to shop around now this really gets on my goat the whining about shopping around I don't have time. You have no idea how busy I am. I have children. I work. Well, you know what, guys? We all have the same 24 hours in a day. It's the way we use those 24 hours is what makes the difference. I work. I have a home to look after. I have other commitments. Shock horror. I shop around. What I don't do is a couple of times a week have coffee with friends. Or watch TV or Netflix or YouTube. I can't do watch or rather listen to YouTube. But when I'm doing office work, I have YouTube playing in the background. I don't waste my time is what I'm trying to say. I use that time to benefit my family. I've prioritised looking after my family and looking after our home over pretty much wasting my time. Now, here in Australia, for around 97% of the population, shopping around isn't a problem. Even most, con uh, most, country, even most country towns have shopping options. 
And if you are in a major city, well, what can I say? Not shopping around, especially at the moment, is just lazy. <laughs> it's just bone lazy. Shopping centres all have at least two supermarkets. Some of the bigger centres have the three majors and some of the bigger biggest centres have more than one of the same supermarket under the one roof. Even our small local strip shopping centres might have a little independent. Then I have a greengrocer, then I'll have a bakery, then I'll have a butcher. You can shop around and compare. What we need to do is stop thinking of shopping as a hobby or as entertainment and think of it as the chore it is. And when you do that, see if you can't find time to shop around because all of a sudden, the couple of hours you spend wandering around Chadston of a weekend, spending money that you can't afford to spend is freed up. So you can actually go and shop around. You can still go to Jadston, but go to Coles, go to Woolworths, go to Aldi. Check out the greengrocers and the butchers and the deli. Compare the prices. It's all under the one centre. You're just using your time more wisely right now. It helps if you write your shopping list in the order of the stores to go to and then go to them, get, get what's on the list and move on to the next store. I tend to um, shop in a circle, if that makes sense. From home, I do a circle and come back home again to get to where I want to go. And when you're shopping around, look at alternatives to the supermarket. You know, the Regex shop still has pasta for 75 cents a 500 gram pack. It's made in Australia from Australian flour. Just because it's at the Regex shop doesn't mean it's substandard. I can actually tell you that it cooks up beautifully. It actually cooks up really well because even if you overboil it, forget about it and it's on the stove boiling away for you know, 18 minutes, it's not a soggy mess. I've been using that pasta for over a year. I love it. Um, Dove cleansing bars, the Dove soap. That's not really soap, it's a cleansing bar. Now, they're often on sale at the reject shop for 80 cents. I think the regular price there is a dollar. When they're on sale for 80 cents, I stock up. I add them to our toiletry pantry then. Actually, on paper, they're in the toiletries pantry. In reality, they're out of the boxes and they're between the sheets in the linen cupboard or the towels or they're in the between the jumpers on the shelves and the wardrobes. This makes everything smell nice. And they're hardening up. Check your local chemist for dishwashing liquid, um, dishwashing detergent, or washing powder, or um, other cleaners. My mind went blank. I saw one the other day and I've forgotten what it is. It's gone blank. But check your local chemist. They don't just hand over prescriptions anymore. I have to say, though, if you're buying washing powder, if you're really serious about saving money, you'd be making the cheapskates washing powder. I've done a couple of videos about it. The recipe is on our website. It's really easy and it is very, very inexpensive. I actually think spending money on cleaning products for the most part is just a waste of money. I know Hannah, over the weekend, we were talking about it and she was um, had a choice um, survey comparison thing they've done and it was quite disappointing that you know while the products they had tested did clean they didn't clean nearly as well as you'd think they would um i buy my dishwasher powder from aldi or coles whichever's cheapest when i'm buying it i use three level teaspoons three level teaspoons there is a little plastic teaspoon in the container with the dishwasher powder 
and I use I do measure out three level teaspoons it is plenty of powder to get the dishes clean a one kilo jug because they come in jugs now um, can last six to eight weeks depending on how much cooking I do and how often I use the dishwasher um, sometimes we can go two two and a half days without running the dishwasher before it's full and because I only run it on full loads so that dishwasher powder is cheap to start with and by measuring it out portioning it out and then being careful how we use it it lasts a lot longer we get more bang for our buck now I also buy dishwashing liquid um, the Tandle Concentrate from Aldi I quite like or Morning Fresh Concentrate. Um, the Regex shop still has it in the 400ml bottles, which is still good value. It's $2.25 I think it's gone up to. Great value. Um, much cheaper, even cheaper than the half price at the super ma the two majors. Now, I always dilute those 50-50 with water. I have done for years and years and years. Now, I use, I use it for general cleaning. I use it for dishwashing, obviously. It cleans the stove, does the basins, the bath. Got to clean walls. It goes into the bucket to clean the walls. Wayne uses a squirt of it to wash the cars um, on the hard floors. Because I don't buy floor cleaners and I don't buy bathroom cleaners and I don't buy window cleaners. They're a waste of money. And... Honestly, if you are struggling financially, you just can't afford them. You just can't afford them. If you're really struggling financially, a bar of soap, hot water and a scrub butter or scrubbing brush will clean just about anything. Yes, you will need to put some elbows grease into that cleaning. Huh. That's something that's been vilified in the last 50 years or so, putting some elbow grease into it and actually doing the cleaning but a cake of laundry soap costs 50 cents it will last for weeks and weeks and weeks of cleaning you can even use it to wash the dishes because that's what they used to do swish it through the water to make the suds and then wash the dishes grate it and use it for washing your clothes another thing you can do is take a look at the meals you're cooking. Are they expensive? Roasts are expensive, very expensive. But we still have our Sunday roast. I just do it differently. The difference is instead of um, a leg of lamb or a piece of beef, I'll bake some lamb chops that are usually bought on markdown. Or I'll make French steak which is, you know, steak bought on Markdown. And because it uses stewing meat, um, it's cheap. And it's even cheaper if it's Markdown. And then I just roast the veggies and I make gravy like we normally do. If you're making meals or recipes that use more than four or five ingredients, rethink them. They're getting up there in price. They're getting a bit expensive. So look for a cheaper version of that recipe that uses what you already have and learn substitutes. Learn what you can substitute for um, buttermilk. Learn what you can substitute for honey. I've got um, a couple of substitute charts over on the Cheapskates Club website. And they're actually really useful. Become stingy with travel. I know I have. Oh boy, have I what? Fuel is very expensive. Um, you know, $2.35, $2.39, $2 $2.50 at some service stations here this week is just ridiculous. And they're talking of $5 a litre for diesel by the end of the year. And it actually looks like it could well happen. So become stingy with your travel. Plan your trips. If you normally drive the kids to school, can they walk? Can they ride their bikes? Can you carpool with another family? I've actually cut driving right back to one trip a week. I check what needs to be done. 
I choose the things that are closest together and that's the trip I will do that week. So I choose the supermarket. The, the one thing I that is the centre pin is the post office. So we all radiate from the post office. So I choose the supermarket, the butcher, the greengrocer, the chemist, any other stores I need to go to from the post office because I always have to go to the post office and I choose them the ones that are all lumped together and closest together and that's the trip. I do it in a circle. Now diesel here is $2.39.9 a litre. I saw it this afternoon. Wayne and I were talking about it this afternoon. Now that means it would cost $168 to fill my car because I have a 70 litre tank in my car. That is more than double our fuel budget. So I do one trip a week and that's it. I absolutely refuse to go into debt to pay for fuel. When, you know, if I plan my trips, I can stick within my budget. And you know what? One trip a week, I'm not even using all the fuel budget. Yes. So what do I do with the excess fuel budget? It goes into the holiday fund and it is actually growing slightly, even with inflation, rising prices and our trimmed way back budget this year. Um, so that's pretty exciting. Very exciting because we're actually we actually have to go interstate this weekend. We have a family um, event to attend, and so we will be away. And we have to drive because, well, we could we could probably bus it, I think, but it wouldn't be any cheaper. And we could probably fly, but flying definitely wouldn't be cheaper for where we have to go. So we will be driving. So that excess fuel money will help cover the cost of our trip. Um, another thing is dress properly. It was a glorious day here today. Who in Melbourne ever thought it was going to get to 18 today? It was cold this morning. Oh my gosh, got to 18 here this afternoon. It, the sun was shining. It was beautiful for about five minutes. And then it turned cold again. So dress properly. It is winter. It is cold. Dress like it's winter and cold. And when you do that, you can actually turn the heating down. That will save you some money. We're talking about you know, how much gas is going up, how much electricity is going up. Well, we actually can't control those prices. What we can control is how much we use of them. The other thing you can do is, um, if you're in Victoria, apply for your $250 rebate. If you haven't already, um, we did it straight away. A bit of a process you've got to have your bill handy and fill out the form whatever but 250 dollars is 250 dollars much better much better for me than the power company so do that um stick to the one light rule turn everything off at the wall don't leave things on standby um even if they look like they're off, if they're plugged in, they're still drawing a small amount of current. So turn them off at the wall. Um, that's a few things you can do. They're all simple things. They are all simple things that we should be doing anyway. We should be dressing appropriately. We should be shopping with our lists. We should be keeping our pantries full. We should be making sure we don't waste electricity or gas. We should be, you know, combining trips, planning trips, so that we're not wasting fuel. But we're only human and we live in a first world country and these things that we take for granted um, are luxuries in other countries. We, we take them for granted and we 
gripe and whinge and whine about them when we don't have them or when we have to pay more for them. So we need to become smarter about how we use these things. We need to become smarter about um, we need to become smarter about conserving everything. Now let's talk debt. <laughs> if you have debt, pay it off. Do whatever you have to do to pay it off. I don't care what anyone says. When you have debt, you own nothing and you run the risk of losing everything. So any debt, no matter how big it is, how small it is, how insignificant you think it is, pay it off. Now, if that means that you have to eat rice and beans for two months, that's what you do. If it means that you have to walk to the shops, that's what you do. If it means your kids can't um, get the latest and greatest toy or game or whatever, that's what needs to happen. You're the parent, they're the kid, you're in control. You need to pay that debt down. Now, if you have a mortgage and you're on a fixed interest rate, you need to be working like crazy to get as much of that mortgage um, paid off before that fixed interest rate finishes. Go like the clappers. Sell the stuff that you're not using. Sell the stuff you don't like. Get a second job. The news tonight, there's 480,000, 80-odd thousand, I think it's 486,000 job vacancies in Australia at the moment. There is work out there. Get a second job if you have to. Yes, you will lose a bit in tax, but you will still be ahead. You will still be able to pay off your debt. Say no. Learn to say no. People ask you to go out, just say no. Or you can just say no. You can say no, thank you. Don't give them an excuse. Don't give them a reason. Just say no. If they ask, tell them. We're on a debt reduction binge. We want to get out of debt in 12 months or whatever. So we're focusing all our money on that. And then they'll either support you or scoff at you. If they scoff at you, they're not friends. And they're no loss. If they support you, great, because then you might have a buddy to work with because we all like to work with buddies. But just say no. It's really hard with kids things I know, but just say no. Kids Kids want to do things. I know our kids wanted to do things and we couldn't afford it. So it was just no. They got what we could afford. We can't afford it. We don't have, I used to tell the kids, mummy doesn't have money in her purse for that. And one day, um, AJ was about four and a half at the time. And he said, but what's that? And so I told him, I said, well, that's the petrol money. And that's the money for the milkman. And that's the money for the, um, groceries. Oh, okay. I said, there's no money for, I think it was a Thunderbirds toy. There's no money for the Thunderbirds toy. Yeah. Huh. So he understood that. He understood that the money for the, you know, the petrol and the um, milkman and the groceries was all used up. There was no spare money. So there was none left for the Thunderbirds toy. He understood that. So explain to your children, you don't have money in your budget for trips to the movies with um, popcorn and hot dogs and giant soft drinks. Whatever it is, you don't have money for holiday camps. You don't have money for it. Explain to them and explain to them that it's not forever because it's not forever. It's a little tiny chunk of time in the grand scheme of a lifetime. So, and then tell them what will happen when you are out of debt. 
you will have so much more money to be able to do fun things. All right. But do whatever you have to to get out of debt. Ring around, drop, insur check your insurances, check your utilities, um, anything you pay. If it's a subscription, um, Netflix or whatever, you might need to drop it. Um, check with your internet provider and make sure you are on the best plan for your usage. You know, you don't need to be paying $100 a month if you barely use the internet, if you only send emails once a day. You can go down and drop down to a basic plan. So do all those things. It just means picking up the phone and asking the question. Some of them might even have forms you can fill out online now. But do those things and then put that money towards paying down the debt. Put it towards the mortgage. Pay off the credit card. Pay off the other loans. Once you are debt free, you can spend it if you want to, as long as you've got the money put aside to pay your bills. So focus on those things because we can beat inflation. We cannot we can survive this but we can surviving isn't what we want to do we want to thrive we want to be better at the other end we want to come out of this situation empowered and confident and strong knowing that we are able to live life debt free that we can save so we're cashed up and we will be laughing and I know that sounds corny, but it's true. You know, um, clothing. Go for op shop clothes. Look, this was new, but it was on the clearance markdown thing. Um, don't be afraid to buy secondhand clothes. Seriously, the secondhand clothes market is booming. It's trendy to buy secondhand clothes. Um and when you look at something, um, when you look at something, I just saw, saw a question, so I'm just going to hover over it so I don't lose it. Um, when you look at something in the op shop, and you might look at it and think, um, I don't like the style, or it's too long, or it's too short, look at it as a piece of fabric. How can you make it work? Can you take it in so it fits better? Can you um, add some trim to change the look of it? Can you dye it black or navy blue so that you can wear it? Because often some of the colours of things, they're a bit faded, but can you dye it black or navy blue or so that you can wear it? Don't discount the... Um, just because you look at it and it go, hmm, it's a really ugly shade of puce. But I like the style. If you like the style and it's $2 and you can buy some dye, dye it. Look at it like that. Now, um, I'm going, going, going. Here, Vicky, I just saw Vicky. Vicky wants to know why we don't put the fuel money back into the fuel budget. We budget fuel money each week. If I don't use it, it gets transferred over to our holiday budget and that then pays for the fuel for our holidays because we don't travel overseas and we don't fly, we drive because we generally go bush. So that's why I don't put the fuel money back into the fuel budget. Our fuel budget is what it is. If we need more, which we haven't ever yet, <laughs> but might happen this year if we need more then I will take it out of the holiday budget but it is what it is it's um like at the end of the year when I balance off close off the budget and there might be excess in some categories I roll it over it doesn't get rolled over like if there's money left in the groceries that goes into the slush fund but if there's money left in clothing it gets transferred out and put into savings or emergency fund and I start again. 
Um, it's just the way I work. Okay. Now, um, sorry. All right, now. Alrighty, now let me go back to my notes because I've lost them. I've lost them. Uh oh, what did I click on? Something. Whoops. Um, there. There we go. Go back up here. Okay, so um, doing just one thing isn't going to help us beat inflation. It's a bit like people that think they can save $6,000 on the price of a new car. Well, they've done a great thing, and they have. They have. But that's a one-off. If they can save you know, $10 a week off their car insurance, that's $520. If they... They, you know, if they can shave hundred dollars a week of their groceries, that's five thousand two hundred dollars. Little things, lots of little things, also add up to a big amount too. And it's those lots of little things that can be done over and over and over. So, doing just one thing won't help us. We need to look at our entire. Um, our entire lifestyle, look at all our spending, all our consuming, and make the changes. The changes, okay, the changes are only going to make you miserable if you let them. Accept the challenge. Accept the challenge to live um, the good life. Accept the challenge to work to beat inflation don't let inflation beat you. Don't let the complete idiocy of what has happened the last two and a half years and what they're telling us is going to come destroy you. Don't let it beat you. We are better than that and we deserve better. So we are also smarter. <laughs> I think we are smarter. We don't need um, to believe the um i was going to say the tribe okay we don't need to believe the tribe that is being spewed forth we need to look at our own lives our own lifestyles and we make the choices that work best for us um for example i'll go back to clothing secondhand clothing you know when disaster struck for us i could sew basic sewing was you know, my mother was a dressmaker, not me. Um, but I had to learn pretty quickly how to sew. I also learned pretty quickly which op shops I could visit to get the best kids' clothes, which ones had the best brand name kids' clothes. My kids had Fred Bear and Pumpkin Patch, but they were secondhand. Um, I had a whole heap of Peter Rabbit stuff for the boys when they were babies. It was secondhand from the op shop and garage sales. So don't discount those things, you know. Don't be afraid to... Don't be afraid to dress from the op shop. That's not what I want to say. What I want to say is don't let others' perceptions influence you. Don't let someone else's insecurities um, shape the way you feel about yourself. I'm trying to put it diplomatically, but I can't. If you've got someone who looks down their nose at you because you wear a hand-me-down, you might have a friend who's passed you a jacket or you've bought jeans from the op shop and you've got someone in your life who looks down their nose at you for doing that, ditch them. Because the problem is theirs, not yours. They, they are too insecure in themselves 
to let you be you. So ask around. There, we all know there are we all know there's good oppies and there's some rather dubious ones. But you know, I have a couple that I absolutely love to go to and frequent quite often, and there's a couple of others that are a bit dodgy, doubtful, but I don't dismiss them because every now and then I will pop in and have a look and see what's there and occasionally I find a real treasure. So don't be afraid to do that. And on that note, keep an open mind. Um, again, as I said in the waste not, want not crafting video, you might pick up a bath mat but see pretty hot pot holders, or you could pick up a rather ugly hand knitted jumper with the colors just perfect for your little girl. So look at it as re knitted into the fa your favorite pattern on her, and then take it, unpick the yarn, wash it, and re knit it. Um, the Duna cover that could become curtains or a pretty tablecloth because it's double-sided, pretty matching placemats. I had to laugh. I got so many comments. People do that. I'm so glad I'm not alone in doing that. Duna covers are such a great source of fabric, folks. But keep an open mind. If you see something on the nature strip for hard rubbish and you know you can use it or... And I have no problem with this either. If you see something on the nature strip for hard rubbish and you know you can clean it up or refinish it or whatever and sell it for a profit, knock on the door and ask if you can have it. Now, in Victoria, and I would assume that it's pretty much like this for most states, it's actually illegal to take things that are put out for hard rubbish. So knock on the door and ask and then you're covered. Now, it's not really garage sale season. It's a bit chilly, but there's still a few happening. And, you know, marketplace is booming with winter decluttering happening. So keep an open mind about where you can get what you need. Um, and look elsewhere before you look at a retail store. Beating inflation just needs a planned attack. We can't just focus on the one area of our budget and let others go. So go back to your lists, make your lists, have a good look at them, create your plan and we will be able to beat inflation and we can do it on our terms, not on the government's, not on and economists, we do it on our terms. Now I'm just going to zip over and let me see. Okay, up. Oh, oh gosh, lots of comments, guys. So give me. Whoa, I can't get my little duva wacky what's it up. I don't know what that. What's that little thing called? Okay, um, let me see. We're glad you're back, Estelle. We did miss you. Um, all right. There we go. Okay, Joy, this is um, talking about COVID and after COVID recovering. Um, dark grape juice and vitamin D. I was listening to a lady, Professor, I should have checked this, I didn't know this would come up, a professor last night on ABC, um, I was on 774, but it comes out of Sydney, so it would have been 702. Um, and she was talking about um, 
how vitamin D actually helps our recovery time from all sorts of things, including um, that virus that shall not be named. So maybe um, some vitamin D will help too. Um, Right, lots of people flooding. Jane's in the Hunter Valley. It's flooded. Uh, Andrew's got a honey and lemon juice tea. It'll be cold by now, I'm sure. Um, Hubby's motorbike, this is from Selena. Hubby's motorbike's gone from under 20 to almost 27 to fill it up. Uh, mm. okay. um, this is going back to the very beginning when we were talking about being told this will happen for three years more. So one year supply of non-perishable perishable foodstuffs it doesn't sound anywhere like that if you're not restocking. So as you use it, restock it, and it will always stay one year ahead. Um, if you're having trouble getting things, that's when you need to be flexible. You need to be able to switch brands, um, find a substitute, learn how to use it, but don't let it run down to nothing restock it keep as you as you use the packet of wheat bix and open the packet of sugar put them on your shopping list so that you know you have to replace them and remember they go to the back of the shelf because first uh first in first used to keep your stock fresh um Um, joy, chickpeas and beans are real. Look, they're forever foods, so they're not going to go off. You don't have to worry about that. They will last forever. But the older they are, the longer you need to soak them. And if you've got a pressure cooker, pressure cooking them actually um, is better or you'll need to boil them for a lot longer because they do get quite hard. But in saying that, they are so versatile. Like even if it's just for um, refried beans, and we love refried beans. And one of the one of the most exciting things in my life was learning how to make refried beans or add them to soup. Um, cook them up and then mash them and put them into meatloaf or into rissoles. There's lots of things you can do with them and they're great sources of protein. Um, some oh, Iron, there's lots of things in beans and chickpeas that um, make them, well, they're actually... Most beans are also a complete protein. So that means you don't need any added protein to make them a meal, which is really good. Um, can I freeze mayonnaise? Keep it in the fridge and it should be fine. Sorry. Um, okay. Okay. If it was me, I would just put it in the fridge and use it. 1.8 kilos sounds like a lot, but if you do a lot of salads, if you use it instead of butter on your bread, um, if you put it into mashed potato, it's not a lot. So, you know, you can get through it really quickly. It doesn't actually freeze very nicely. I think it would separate Um but I, 
that's me. I'm not telling you what to do. That's what I would do. Just put it in the fridge and keep um, using it. Okay, looking for looking, looking, looking for question. Uh, Sorry, guys, I'm just looking for questions. Um, Joy made 20 litres of gloop on Monday. Gloop, in case you know, is um, the gel form of um, washing liquid. Um, Elbow, beat, elbow grease burns calories. So if you're trying to lose weight, start cleaning. Yes. Um, wow, that's a great price on the Panamax, Delaney. Was it um, last time I was there, um, they still had the limits on it, on all the um, analgesics. Uh, no <laughs> short answer no freeze it and cook it um and you can refreeze it, but no. Um, okay. So. And, all right. Comments coming up faster. Oh, hang on, I'll be back in just a moment. There we go. Sorry about that. My battery was running out. Right, it's a bit of a disaster. It's a bit odd. I thought I was plugged in. Sorry, guys. Um... Everywhere's cold, Jane. Um, okay. Wow. There you go. See, an alternative to um, buying new from the shops, as I said, marketplace and... Um, Facebook and all those things are really firing up. This, um, I know a lot of people did a lot of decluttering during the first round of lockdowns and flooded op shops, but now they're seeming to get rid of a lot of the stuff that they bought spontaneously. Um, uh,
All righty. Now, we used to buy secondhand uniforms too for the kids at school. Our kids are in private school, so the uniforms are very expensive. So they got one new set to start um, school and the rest was secondhand. I remember going to a Salvo's store um, when the boys, it must have been Thomas was in prep, so AJ would have been going into grade two, and they had stubby school shorts for 50 cents a pair. Oh, my goodness. I went I went nuts because they were 50 cents a pair, and they had hit the head up to a size 16. So you can imagine that I had school shorts put away for the boys for years. Um, and then Hannah had one new school dress. And then I have a friend whose daughter was a couple of years older than Hannah and she just passed hers down, which worked really, really well. Um, and, yeah, you're right, Joy, the difference between new and secondhand is two or three washes, especially these days. Um We, unfortunately, fortunately, we had to cancel um, our trips in 2020 and our trips last year. And we've cancelled two trips already this year. Now, we get our new camper the end of this month. So it's really funny. When we were told we'd get the new camper, the first thing, um, the first thing I did was book, in, book us into a trip. And Wayne rang me and said, I see you've booked us into a trip. And I said, yes. He, he said, oh. I said, is that all right? He said, yeah, I've booked us into one too. So we now have three trips between now and the end of the year already booked in. It's a good job. <laughs> it's a good job. We've got that fuel money um, in our savings because I think we're going to need it. It's got very expensive Um and I, I can't wait to get our camper back and be going again. It's been the longest, was it seven months now, seven months since that accident. Um, you go. Second job is too difficult. Think about reselling online. And that's sort of like what I said about um, you see something on the side of the road and it's in good condition and you can't use it but you are able to pretty it up or even just wash it and sell it for a profit, knock on the door and ask. I'm still using the table out the back um, that's actually vintage. Remember 1950s and 1960s, they had patio sets and they were all metal, all white metal, not the coal book ones, but these were very, mm, the table's round and it's just got curved legs. It's very, very pretty, very plain, simple, very um, mid-century. And it was on the, on the nature strip and hard rubbish and I was taking the kids to school. So I've pulled into the driveway, got out, rapped on the door, said to the lady that answered, is that table on hard rubbish? And she said, yes, said, would you mind if I had it? She said, no, 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 that's fine, you take it. Well, I was in the car with the kids. So then I had to say to her, do you mind if I just put it over the fence and my husband picks it up on his way home from work? She just laughed at me. She thought it was funny. But then I had to ring Wayne and tell him to go via that house to pick up my table for me and I'm still using it. Now, that was when the kids were in primary school. So that's... Uh, um, 20, more than 20 years ago, um, I'm still using it. I do, I sand it back and repaint it every spring, but it's a great little table. It costs nothing. Now I could, I have, I have been told I could sell it, but I don't want to. Um, in my budget, um, Vicky, yes. I did budgeting a budgeting video at the beginning of the year talking about our spending plan and how I do it. 
everything gets closed off at the end of the year and I start the new year fresh. Um, I don't roll. If there's any excess, it doesn't get rolled over. Um, okay. That's it exactly. Um, I, I don't know. I come from a frugal family. Wayne comes from a frugal family. But we also, our family is also um, quality, quality frugal, if that's right. Um, I go looking for quality. So if it's a, if I know it's a $2 Kmart t-shirt and it's $1.50 at the op shop, I'm not going to buy it. We can tell anyway because they're usually skew whiff and whatever. So I look for quality. I look for, I test the fabric. I like a real bugbear about patterns that don't match. I can remember I was given a Kendone, this is back in the 80s, given a Kendone skirt and I hated, I love the fabric, love the skirt, hated wearing it because the pattern match on the side seams was way out and it drove me nuts. I hated it. That to me is just lazy. And Kendone, those, those skirts were really expensive. Even back in 1988, they were really expensive. Um, so I don't like things like that. I'm really particular about matching checks and things too. Um. Do you keep Andrea? I, she says, I buy frozen puff pastry and have it in a square container to keep it in, but I find that it still dries out. How can I stop that? Okay, burp your container. Um, I don't have a square container. You know how put your lid on and then push your hand in the middle and lift the corner and you'll hear it burp, put the lid down. The other thing, and I keep it, still keep it in the wrapper, so I split the plastic on three sides and slide the pastry out and then put that whole packet back into the container and put the lid on it and burp it. Um, it's freezer burn more than anything else. So you need to get the air out of the container. Um, now the old Tupperware rule was round containers you burp square and rectangles you didn't because the square and rectangle containers were for meats and cheeses and they are the things that need air around them whereas the round containers were more the canisters that didn't need air so that old rule of thumb still works to a certain degree depending on what you put in the container but yeah burp it but keep it in the um packaging in the cardboard um You do always look nice, Jane. You always look lovely. Um, I was shopping at Dandenong Market um, a few, before they redid it, so it's a long time ago now, and there were a couple of stalls that I absolutely loved at the market. One was great for kids' clothes. One was good for men's clothes. And there was one that was really good for things that I liked. This lady, she had satin, um, silk satin nighties. And they were oh, the prettiest, prettiest blue. They were size 28. They were enormous. They were huge. But they were only $10 each. And my friend Debbie was with me and we were looking at them and we both picked them up and the lady just looked at us and said, I think they might be a bit big. I said, oh, well, if I was going to wear it as a nighty, I'd cut it down. But I was looking, there was enough fabric in that. I actually made myself a short sleeve shell top out of it. There was enough fabric in it. It was beautiful, beautiful fabric. So, yeah. 
they are cheaper than fabric and you just need to um, think outside the square. Um, Tegan, what I found is with the op shops, so with the Vinnies, with the um, Salvos, um, what's the other one? There's another one, Brotherhood of St. Lawrence. There are um, company-owned op shops, for want of a better word, and then there are franchises. So we have three Salvos quite close to us. Two of them are franchises and really, really expensive. One is an actual Salvation Army run, Salvo's op shop, and it's a proper op shop. So you need to um, figure out whether it's a franchise, in which case they are paying the franchise fees um, for the branding in the hope that, you know, they'll make a fortune or not and try and just go to the actual organisation owned and run op shops. Uh, country op shops are the best. I know when we go to Warrnambool, I make Wayne on the way home. I usually make Wayne stop at, I can't remember the name of the place. It's a really pretty little town that we go through anyway. And there's this, narrow tiny narrow little op shop goes all the way back but it's really narrow it's great get the best belts there really good handbags i have so much fun when we go there um, 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 um. Yeah, thanks, Delaney. I've got a chemist warehouse just down the road a bit. So tomorrow is shopping day. Um, we'll see. Okay. Okay, Delaney is talking about Instant Pots. I have a, Instant Pot is brand name, guys. It's a brand name. So my pressure cooker, I just call it the pressure cooker, is another version of the Instant Pot for, I don't know, it was $169 or something. It's really inexpensive. It's wonderful. So Instant Pot is a brand name. Just be aware of that and you will be paying for it, for the brand name. Um, 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 What we're seeing happening is, um, I was talking about this on another another platform, but um, what's happening now is people are going, well, the shelves seeming to be full and there's no longer any shortages because the stuff that wasn't, you know, couldn't come in has finally come in. Now, you're also finding, as I did a couple of weeks ago, that the prices are going up because while it's been in limbo in La La Land, the shelves have run bare, but now it's back in, they're changing the prices and upping the prices. So a lot of what you'll find will have the have old price ripped off, new price on. Um it won't last. You're right, Andrea. It won't last. All right, yeah, it won't last. Um, the um, the cycle will 
is that it's going to go crazy for a couple of months and then drop right back off again and there's nothing behind what's coming now. So the shortages will be the same or different, same but more severe is what I'm trying to say. Um, Did anyone see on the news tonight in the Netherlands the farmers um, protested? They parked their tractors on the main highway between Antwerp and Germany, blocking the highway because they have been forced by the government or by the European Union, by the government, to um, cull 50% of their livestock. And if they are crop farmers, they have had to cut 50% of the fertilisers that they use to grow their crop. all in the name of climate change, apparently. They were protesting. It was really interesting. And it was actually really nice to see all those tractors lined up. They look spectacular. That is... Um, that is a blatantly irresponsible thing to do, for any government to do. Um on so many levels, on so many levels. And when, I have to be careful, when there are, um, when there are plans in place to um, eliminate livestock farming almost completely not completely but almost completely and instead turn people to supposedly plant-based foods or lab-grown meats or um, minced insect meals it just reeks of oh, I was going to say bullying. Um, it just reeks of shady, sneaky, underhanded. Um, yeah, no. So I thought that was really interesting. My, I feel really. Um, I feel really, really bad for the um, for the farmers. Anyone, if you've ever ever had to live off the land, if that's how you've made your your living, you'll know that it's hard. If you've never done it, you've always been a city person, you you will suspect that it is hard. It's a constant battle, and it's a constant strain and it is never ending, never ending paperwork. It is just ridiculous. So to have your government turn around and legislate that for no reason, there's nothing wrong with the livestock. They're perfectly um, healthy. They're not being abused. They're not diseased. They don't have mad cow or whatever must be destroyed in the name of climate change, which is what it boils down to, that is evil. Nothing but evil. Um, Vicky's got a question. What does it go into? The end of the year when it's rolled over, anything that's excess, 
um, grocery money goes into the slush fund. Everything else goes into either our emergency fund or our savings account. Um, to build the emergency fund or build our savings. Um, I hope I've got that right. Um, I never had a kendo and jumper, but I had lots of fabrics. My brother-in-law's, my brother-in-law's father. Uh, I might have been just might have just been my brother-in-law. Um, serviced sewing machines in the factory that made um, the kendo clothes, shirts, and whatever. And so I had he would get the offcuts um, and bring the offcuts to me. So I had heaps and heaps and heaps of um, bits of beautiful fabrics because they really were gorgeous. They were so, so bright and vibrant I just love, and beautiful cottons, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful cottons. Um, okay. Um, all right. Okay, I need to get moving. Vicky, I have no idea what the name of the video was. I've got 456 videos on YouTube. It was January this year, one of the first ones I did this year. So if you go scroll back through the video list to January, um, you'll find it. But I... I I have trouble remembering my name. Someone asked me the phone number the other day and I couldn't remember it. So, um, you should try doing a, a one year shop, Kerry. Two trolleys piled high, neatly stacked, throws people into hysterics. I can remember one old man asked me how many children I had. <laughs> oh, dear. All right. Uh, um, yeah, look, I have to say... Um, if it ever came to that, I I would be wanting to see. I'd be wanting to do my own butchering. <laughs> I'm I I yeah. That's the movie where people got to a certain age and then they went to a better place. Is that right? And what they actually did was get gassed or something and then turned into pretty much blood and bone fertilizer. Is that it? Oh, supreme meat. <sighs> oh, it's not have to ask yourself what sort of sick imagination came up with that how twisted was that brain to come up with that hmm all right okay how long past the date can whole egg mayo stay in the fridge is it a best before or a use by that'll tell you if it's a best before It'll be months. If it's a used by, probably, I don't know. I don't know. Look it up. I have no idea. As I said, if it was me, I would just put it in the fridge and keep using it until it was gone. Um, uh -huh. Oh, Tegan, you would have over, yeah, at least a month. At least a month. At least, at least a month. Um, read the ingredients on the back of the jar. There will be a preservative or two in there. The vinegar is a preservative. There'll be a preservative or two in there. Um, haven't seen any of them. Haven't seen any of them. Um, 
carry, so I wouldn't have a clue. Okay, guys, we can beat inflation. We just need to be a little smarter, or no, we need to work smarter than we have been. Interest rates are going up. You know, what was it? On a $500,000 mortgage, it's gone up a half a percent. So that's going to add another $137 a month to, um, to that mortgage. That's a lot of money to have to come up with on the fly, every month on the fly. So there will need to be sacrifices. And I'm going to say they're sacrifices. You will, in the short term, you are going to have to make, if that affects you, there will need to be changes and sacrifices. Some things that we believe we can't live without, we are going to have to live without. Some things we think are necessities, we will find out very quickly aren't necessities. If we are not very careful, this is going to turn into 2005, 2006, 2007, 2008, all over again only on a much bigger scale because the mortgages are that much bigger, the debt is that much bigger. So work really hard at paying down your debt. Do the best you can to keep your pantry stocked. So as we were saying to Estelle, as you use it, replace it. Build skills. Learn how to grow some food. Learn basic sewing skills. Learn some knitting or crocheting if you if you can. They're not difficult. Truly, guys, if I can do it, anyone can do it. Work out what's important to you and ditch everything else. Speaking from experience here, that's what we had to do. We had to decide what was important to us and ditch everything else because we did not have I did not even have five cents left in the budget. If something was over, something else had to go. There was no wriggle room in our budget. So we can do it. If I can do it, you can do it. We can all do it and we can beat inflation and we can do it and come out the other side champions. We'll come out the other side grinning from ear to ear because really... We are going to be so much better off. Um, uh, we're, we're blessed to have food banks. But do you know what? Here in Victoria alone, our building industry has just tanked. It has just crashed. So we not only have um, a whole lot of carpenters, electricians, Wickies, plumbers, tilers that are out of work. We've got families that no longer have, have homes being built for them. And then we have suppliers that aren't being paid. So the timber companies, the brick companies, the tile companies, the plasterboard companies, the insulation companies, the are not the concrete pouring people are not being paid and that's going to skyrocket because then if the plasterboard company isn't being paid then they can't pay their workers and not only that they can't pay for the supplies that they need to make the plasterboard to sell to the builder who's just gone broke it's a vicious circle that really should not be happening. I don't care what anyone says. It should not be happening and it is not being helped at all. We can beat this and we can do it and we can do it um, with charity. So I'm going to leave you because it's 9 o'clock. I told you it was going to be a long show. And I think I have um, shared my opinions enough. Don't give up. Don't give up. We're here. We will all support you. We are here for one another. And, you know, if you want to chat, you can go over to Cheapskates Chatter. That's our Facebook group. There's two questions. You must answer the two questions or you won't 
be accepted and that's you know two simple questions don't answer them you won't be able to join um if you answer them you're in automatically guys um lots of information over there then you've got our website lots of information on our website but there's support for you support for all of us and we know that we can do this I didn't want to end on a gloomy <laughs> I didn't want to end on a gloomy note um, but we can do it you know we've been in worse situations we can get through this and it's not um, I guess it's a challenge and if someone throws someone's thrown down the gauntlet and said you know what you are going to own nothing and like it well you know what I don't want to own nothing and like it. I want to own what I work for and I will love it. So that's the gauntlet that's been pretty much thrown down to us, guys. You will own nothing and like it. I don't accept that. I'm going to own what I want to own and I will love it. All right. If you are not a subscriber to our channel, click the subscribe button. Thumbs up, please, guys. If you have enjoyed tonight's show, hit that thumbs up button. That really, really helps us on YouTube. It helps YouTube do something special to us. I don't know what. I don't understand the ins and outs. I just know it's good for us. Um, if you know someone who might like the show or might like to know about Cheapskates Club, there's also a share link. It just says, click that share button. It sends them the link. We do not harass them. We don't send them anything else. It just sends them the link. I will be back next Tuesday, all being well, after our um, trip. Um, we will be back. Oh, my gosh. Sorry, I just saw Jane's comment. Um, I will be back next Tuesday live. In the meantime, I have been posting regular videos every day. So I've got a few scheduled or ahead already. I hope you enjoy them. Thank you for staying with me if you've made it this far. Um, what's he going to say? I had something to say and it's gone. Anyway, have a great week, everyone. Keep cheap skating what do, what do we say keep calm and keep on cheap skating i'll be back next tuesday i'll see you all then night <laughs>